This video is sponsored by Squarespace. There's no denying that when a show becomes popular, there are imitators around every corner. You know, people who see the success of a certain formula or style, and decide they want to do it for themselves in an attempt to make the consumer believe there's some relation between the big popular thing and theirs. We had all those Family Guy knockoffs, which I covered a few years back. That eventually turned into folks trying to copy Rick and Morty when it exploded with Wide Acclaim. And in my opinion, next on the chopping block is Smiling Friends. We are going to see so many cartoons in a similar vein coming out. Not that it's released and showed executives that surreal, experimental, but still well-written cartoons has a place on TV and streaming. See though, this strategy more often than not winds up feeling miserably. Unsurprisingly, due to the fact that when you're only attempting to rehash something already done, not only will it just peel in comparison only being seen as an imitator, but also just won't have the same heart and soul it will come off corporate like it was made in a lab. I feel bad for a lot of the creators who had to pivot their original vision into something already successful. Like I can't imagine the animated Star Trek show was always going to look exactly like Rick and Morty until some executive had saw the creator had worked on that thing and just told them to do it again. But then there are the cartoons that don't even seem like they had that behind it. Like it was designed by a million different people all trying to make something as marketable and focus tested as possible. And that's where the topic of today's video comes into play. South Park. Ripping off a show like Family Guy or Rick and Morty at the very least allows for some creativity. Like when you copy your friend's homework but try your hardest to make it seem just different enough so that it doesn't ride on plagiarism. But South Park has such a visually distinct look and feel to it, with the simple cutout designs and the fast six-day turnarounds allowing the creators to comment on topical issues, there's no other show like South Park, and so it makes imitating it really freaking obvious. But there have been a few attempts to do so. Shockingly, on South Park's home turf, Comedy Central. You what? Comedy Central boomed in viewership once South Park began airing in 1997. Before, they were only airing in around 9 million homes, but not long after South Park started, that jumped to 50 million. It's no exaggeration to claim that without South Park, Comedy Central wouldn't have gotten anywhere near as successful as it ended up being. So what if they, what if they like, me at South Park? But again. Comedy Central had their share of animated programming before South Park, like Dr. Katz. If you've never heard of that before, you might recognize it from its parody on, on South Park. And they've bought the rights to air certain programming like Bojack Horseman and Futurama. But when it came to their own original programming, there weren't many heavy hitters that could compete with the Golden Child. I mean, what is there? Drawn Together? Brickleberry? Oh, watch your back, South Park. Hell, even these shows knew that they couldn't compete. Drawn Together basically dedicating their whole movie to bitch about South Park being way more popular. Chad is a South Park! Now this place is funny. I bet if we lived here, more people would watch. And that's when I started to notice patterns of Comedy Central trying to recapture the success of South Park. Why try and have another show come out that stands on its own when you could just say, Hey, you like South Park, right? Well, well, this kind of looks like South Park too, huh? You, you gonna watch it or what? And so today I want to take a look at some of Comedy Central's attempts at recapturing South Park's magic. They aren't super blatant like Block 13 or anything, or the Family Guy clones we looked at. Like, they don't all feature four boys living in a quiet mountain town or anything. But you could definitely tell in the way they look and feel, they're trying to take cues and appeal to the same audience. Although, interestingly, they go about it in extremely different ways. Some coming off much more like it's trying to be early South Park, and others trying to be like later South Park. So let's get into the first series and see how Comedy Central tried to copy the show that they already own. This show is dreadful. There is no way around it. I think it might be one of the worst programs I've ever talked about on this channel. And and I watched Smosh Babies. I remember when this was coming out and saw everybody trashing it for like a month straight. And honestly, in this case, it was deserved. It's so weird to see all these stories of aspiring creators trying and feeling and trying again to get their own show. Studios never interested in making something not based off another IP. And then Fairview just rolls on in. How did this possibly get picked up? There you go. Also, if any of you want to question me saying this is a South Park knockoff. All right, so Fairview is described as a small town with big issues. What can viewers expect? I mean, we, our lead-in is South Park. Wham, there you go. Hell, even the scene transition music sounds the exact same. All right, Fairview. It's so weird to me that Stephen Colbert got the chance to be involved in another cartoon, considering only a couple years ago he got to crash and burn with our cartoon president. 
a show all about how dumb the president is. Fighting satire. But given Fairview not being created by him, I wonder how much involvement he actually had. Considering it is exactly what I would think of upon hearing Stephen Colbert cartoon. So, imagine South Park, but the main protagonist was everybody's favorite character. Mayor. That's Fairview. Doesn't it sound hilarious? But because I'm mayor, all attendees must either be vaxxed or bring a negative PCR COVID test from the last 24 hours. What the f- Oh, that's right. This came out in 2022. Escapism? Never heard of it. Yeah, so we're basically just looking at the daily shenanigans of the mayor in this small town, as they take on current social issues like cancel culture and cryptocurrency. And by God, is it annoying. You know when a show writes a character who's meant to be dumb and wrong? Kinda gets to that point where you feel like the writer is just venting about a type of person instead of actually writing a character? The professional equivalent of just repeating what the other person says but in a mocking tone? That is every single character in Fairview. And it is so... friggin' on the nose and annoying. Like, I'll give you the rundown of the first episode of Fairview so you can see how obvious it all is. The mayor doesn't let someone throw a COVID party. Because COVID. The other characters saying such subtle commentary as, Why would you not let us do this thing that will possibly increase illness and death in our neighborhood? Usually I exaggerate for effect, but no, that is exactly how every joke is written. They all try to find a way to make their friend learn how to be a dumbass again. That's the word they use, so that she'll allow them to throw the party. And so eventually she learns to be a dumbass. Then they throw the party, the guy who wanted it gets sick, and the mayor realizes that being a dumbass is fine, but death isn't. Oh, but we can't forget about the hilarious B story, where this redneck mother won't let her son be friends with a non-binary kid because he got vaccinated, and so she tries to teach him how to be an asshole. Her words, not mine. Well, why do I even bother? That's not even to mention her voice, Jesus Christ, it's like fucking kneels on a chalkboard. Beef, I don't want you being a total fucking idiot asshole just because I said so. You should only do it if you want to. I just don't like... Does it ever get tiring? I haven't been in America very long, and in Ireland I tune that crap out, but for Americans out there, does it ever get tiring having to constantly hear about politics in this way? Where we have to have these shows that feel like they're written by an AI? Like, I get it's funny to make fun of extreme political views, but why are there so many of these shows that's just dedicated to how dumb and stupid the other side of the political spectrum is? And this goes both ways. South Park is a series that likes to tackle a lot of real-world events and political issues, but at the very least, it isn't every episode. Unlike Fairview, there's some levity to it, but here they just, they just treat the viewer like they're a moron. The piecing is so goddamn fast because there's like 15 million characters, all of equal non-importance. Even the credits are sped along because there's a hundred different producers on this thing. I mean, no wonder it came out the way it did, there's no vision here. It's just a bunch of people wanting to make a political cartoon without any care for whether or not it's actually good. There's this part in the cancel culture episode where it's about the town anthem being under fire because the guy who made it abused women and all. And they play this song throughout the entire episode. But whoever is behind it had such little confidence that you would be able to actually understand their obvious as hell commentary that they literally just overlay the lyrics to the song on the screen in case you miss their biting social satire. The message is quite literally being spelled out to you. This show looks like shit. It's like they combined Archer, South Park, Higley Town Heroes on Disney Junior, and those crappy caricature artists all in one. The actors are constantly screaming and shouting, but half the time the characters are just sitting there with a blank look and smile on their face. It's like they wanted to get the same fast turnarounds as South Park without understanding that came after the style was already sorted. South Park looks the way it does because of Matt Stone and Trey Parker's affection for Monty Python, not in some desperate attempt to cram out as many topical stories as possible. Oh, oh what's that? Cancelled after only eight episodes? No. How could the public not have grown attached to these likable characters, such as Mayor, Redneck, Jonah Hill? I don't think this is necessarily a bad idea for a cartoon, but this was not the right people behind it. Stephen Colbert's other show, Tuning Out the News, seemed much more in line with what's expected from him. I'm just sick of shows where rich, famous people try to give commentary on what it's like being a part of the middle class. 
because you'll wind up with one of the most tone-deaf, annoying cartoons I think I've ever seen. Like I said, Fairview was cancelled after only eight episodes, and I highly doubt more to come. This was a shameless attempt to cash in on the Prius Scythe Park receives for being able to keep up with commentary on current events. And I, for one, am glad that it failed spectacularly. Alright, let's move on, just hope it's not more political. Yeah, so that gimmick of taking the current president of the time and making a cartoon about them wasn't just something that started with Trump. Funnily enough, the creators of South Park themselves tried something similar once when they planned on making a live-action sitcom all about Al Gore living in the White House named Everybody Loves Gore. However, Al Gore of course ended up losing the presidential election, and so they made That's My Bush instead. Comedy Central, apparently not done with this concept, greenlit the animated series Little Bush, created by Simpsons writer Donna Carey, which showed the adventures of a young George Bush, in which his father, George H.W. Bush, is the President of the United States, leaving little George to get up to mischief with his friends, who are all based on the real-life George Bush's actual staff, such as little Dick Cheney, little Condoleezza Rice, and little Donald Rumsfeld. Although Dick Cheney isn't as much of a character given his inability to form coherent sentences. He's being kidnapped! <laughs> October surprise! <laughs> He's right! Hmm. Four file mouthed kids with one who speaks what's basically gibberish. Interesting. This is a weird show. I wouldn't call it good by any means, but there are certain aspects of it I find kind of charming, honestly. I mean, even just the idea is sort of amusing. Like, have you seen the actual George Bush's speeches before? Suddenly, his portrayal of Family Guy started making a lot of sense to me. <laughs> the guy is just kind of funny. He tries to act so cool with all these quips and catchphrases, but he's just a little old man, so it comes off comical. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. Now watch this drive. First of all, released in 2007, the Flash animation isn't exactly the best. Characters have all these super slow and stiff movements which are left to the absolute minimum, often cycling through the same stock poses and facial expressions. The look of it is mostly fine when I was watching the show at a lower quality, but when you see it with a higher resolution it looks really rough. There's just something about those old Flash brush strokes that makes this look like it belonged more on new grinds than television. It's just a weird show, there are so many elements at play here that just leave me wondering how it happened. Like, like George runs a band with his friends and so every single episode has a musical number featured in it? Move aside, Finney and Ferb, I think Little Bush has you matched. It's got that issue too where you can tell it's trying way too hard to be edgy, like when an episode starts with the boys making a bet for who can kiss the first girl, and ends with Little Cheney getting stuck inside the womb of George Bush's mother and has to get out through an abortion. It it's also reactionary, but it doesn't work because of how try hard it comes across, even being a little tame by today's standards, honestly. Even critics thought it wasn't anything special, citing it as just being... Well, a worse South Park. The only real merit I can give to this cartoon is that whoever is doing the impression of George Bush, you did a pretty good job. Congratulations. He is without it at the highlight. Nothing he's saying is particularly funny or anything, but the way he says it almost makes it work. I'd give you a hand, but this is my last one. I think it's a little inappropriate to joke about the war. That being said, I can get why this show only lasted around a year, getting two seasons but only consisting of about 24 episodes. Season 2 was a tad different to its first in that it was a full 22 minute story instead of being chopped up into two 11 minute adventures, but do you really care about that? More Little Bush? No, of course you don't. So next, let's take a look at another one of Comedy Central's relatively recent attempts at making a hit new animated series, and I remember hating the look of this thing as a kid, despite not even watching a single episode. So I'm curious to see if it'll actually change my mind. I remember seeing trailers for this show all over Comedy Central back in 2016, letting you know this was a hot new thing coming out. And much like the rest of them, it was strategically airing right after South Park. Of course, that being in the hopes that regular South Park viewers would tune in out of interest, since they were already on the channel and, in theory, become a fan. Get your head in the game, mother it didn't work. The South Park premiering before then was the first episode of season 20, which received around 2 million viewers, with only around a quarter or so of them sticking around to check out Legends of Chamberlain Heights. I mean, I can see why, because this show is nothing like how South Park was at the time. Again, this was when season 20 was airing, when they were going all into politics and serialization. I can at least see the thought process and hoping that an audience would translate over to something like Fairview, but Legends of Chamberlain Heights seems much more like it's trying to replicate the structure and tone of early South Park, with a focus on crude humor and nonsensical adventures. It stars a group of three kids, Grover, Milk, and Jamal. 
They're all on the high school basketball team, but are 99% of the time reserved as bench warmers. But it won't stop them from the goal of one day becoming basketball legends. It was despised when it came out. Videos all over YouTube talking about how terrible it was. Which may have just been a result of how in-your-face Comedy Central was when promoting it. Hell, they even picked it up for a second season before the first came out. So it had pretty big shoes to fill, and most agreed it didn't really live up to that. I have, though, been seeing folks in more recent times come out to say how they didn't think that show was actually that bad. And in my opinion, yeah, it wasn't really the worst thing in the world like so many people cried about it being. Jamal is fat and likes food. Grover doesn't really have much of a personality, but I think he's meant to be like the straight man of the group. While Milk is a white kid who acts like he's black. That's the only joke they ever really tell with him. My hands ain't up. Why don't you shoot? What are you crazy? This is America. You have rights. I don't really mind it when you've got these simple character archetypes, but nothing is really ever done with them beyond the same gags over and over. Most of the humor in this show coming from edgy jokes and the character's frequent use of the n-word. And uh... Yeah, I don't think I'm exactly this show's target demographic. The basketball aspect never even really comes into play all that often, at least from the episodes I watched. It mainly seems like it's there to make it seem different from your average high school show. Going to parties, competitions with siblings. Usually I enjoy these more grinded slice of life series, but Legends mainly suffers from none of the characters being all that likable. Again, what I said about them before, that's all they ever do with them. Fat, boring, and white. It attempts to have a lot of gross art too, but none of it really works with this simplistic art style. I saw a lot of folks bitching about the way it looks when, honestly, I kinda like it. The super flat angles and sketchy outlines. Sure, this was clearly done to save on costs. It looks like it would've been a very cheap series to produce, which is probably why Comedy Central didn't hesitate to give it another season, but... I don't know, I think it looks kinda decent. Like, just look at this old dog. I like him. And hey, each episode at the very least tries to have a coherent story. That's more than I can say about Fairview, but I can see why it failed to ever take off. Every single line of dialogue has at least 50 unique slang words, so I can imagine to your average South Park fan this just came off as loud, incomprehensible noise. But at the same time, I can see why it's got its own tiny little cult fan bias. I've even had a few friends mention to me before how they were big fans of it. But alas, it was never meant to be. Getting cancelled after only 20 episodes, with its viewership in the second season dropping to as low as 150,000. So yeah, Legends of Chamberlain Heights? Not for me, but I can see the appeal. So what is the takeaway here? Comedy Central does not know what its audience wants when it comes to animation. It seems like they just had that initial success with Scythe Park and didn't really know what to do from there. Most of their best shows didn't even come from them, they just got the rights to air it like Bojack and Futurama. I've been seeing billboards everywhere for their new series coming out, Digman, which is about a deadbeat archaeologist trying to regain his long lost fame, going for that same Rick and Morty ripoff style and uses a crappy cover of All Star in its trailer so you can tell whoever's behind it is up to date with all the current memes. And me! Sorry, who are you? I'm Snurdly Tootbottom. But keep throwing that shit at the wall, Comedy Central. I'm sure eventually one of them will stick. Watch me whip! Watch me nay-nay, fellas! Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace gives folks a powerful online platform to create your own website, connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage your members, send emails, and leverage audience insights, all in one easy-to-use platform. There's even a fully integrated comment system that supports comments, threads, and likes. Or check out the Squarespace extensions, third-party tools that help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe as well as letting you display posts from your own social media profiles. Why wouldn't you want to use Squarespace? So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash lsmark to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Bye.